explain why it's important to determine the initial rate of a reaction when investigating the effect of competitive inhibitor on an enzyme. So regardless of whether you've got the inhibitor or no inhibitor, every time you care experiment involving enzyme, you need to measure the initial rate. So all of you know you need to measure initial rate. But if I give you a two mark question and ask you to explain why, do you know, really, really know why you need to measure initial rate? Okay, you're going to take this opportunity to relearn this part to make sure that you understand this part. Okay, you have to understand it very clearly. In an enzyme catalyzed reaction, that means the substrate must be converted to product. Okay, so the moment we add the enzyme and mix the enzyme with the substrate together in a reaction mixture, reaction starts. Right? Reaction starts means substrate will be converted to product. So what will happen to substrate concentration the moment the reaction starts? Mahi? What will happen to my substrate concentration the moment the reaction starts? Uh, it will decrease. It will decrease, isn't it? Very good. So substrate will be converted to product. It will take some time for all the substrate to be converted to product. So as time passes by, my substrate concentration continue to drop, isn't it? As time passes by. So eventually, what is my substrate concentration? Joey, I uh, don't, don't call Joey. Um, Simba. 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 What happened to my substrate concentration finally at the end of the reaction? Hello? Simba disappeared from the seat already, is it? Yes, it be used up. Very good. Use up means what? Use up means what is the concentration when it's used up? Crystal, good. Decrease? No, I already said decrease. At the end of the day, when all substrate converted to product, you still have substrate or not? No. No means how much is the substrate? No means how much? Zero. Very good. Zero, isn't it? Okay. So you see, So that means to say my rate of reaction as a substrate concentration drop, what happened to my rate of reaction? Um, Ki Jing Yi. What happened to my rate of reaction? Increase. Decrease, isn't it? Very good. Decrease. So based on this one, all of you know how to explain, right? So can you tell me, in my enzyme catalyzed reaction, when is it that the rate is the highest? When she? When will be the rate is the highest? The initial rate, is it? Yes, RI. I stands for initial rate. So the rate is highest at the initial rate. Why the rate is the highest at initial rate? Because the substrate concentration, the initial substrate concentration is the highest, right? It's the highest. Why is highest? Because when the reaction start, the substrate will be converted to product already. Then the substrate condition will drop. Okay? So because of that, we want to measure the initial rate because the substrate, initial substrate condition is the highest. Hence, the initial rate of reaction is the highest. And then this rate is the most accurate for the substrate concentration indicated in the materials and methods of the experiment. You know, every time you do experiment, right, you have to write the materials and methods, right? So in your materials and methods, you say that, oh, I'm going to use this concentration of substrate, uh, a 5 cm cube of this concentration of substrate. So you say that you're going to use this concentration. So therefore, when you report your result, which is the rate of reaction, your result, I will try to tell you, oh, for this concentration that you use, right, this will be the rate that you will get. So when will be the rate that is closest for this substrate concentration is at the beginning, the initial substrate function. 
is the closest to the original substrate concentration that you have reported. So that's why we always will take the initial rate. So do you see how to answer the question now? It's very easy because initial substrate concentration is the closest to the original concentration indicated in material methods. And this is the highest, so the rate is the highest. Okay, so this applies for all the enzyme catalyzed reaction. This is the first part. Second part is if you go to take the measure the rate of reaction at the end of the experiment. Now, at the end of the experiment, all the substrate are used up. Huh? Used up already, that means to say the rate of reaction equals to zero. Equals to zero. So, regardless of what substrate condition you're going to use, the final rate is going to be zero. You don't want to measure the final rate, then you cannot see the difference for the rate for different substrate concentration. Let's say, for example, you use five substrate concentration, right? You use different substrate concentration and you want to compare. For different substrate concentration, what is the rate? Of course, you cannot be measuring the rate at the end of the reaction because regardless of what is the substrate concentration, five, four, three, two, one, you're going to get your rate equals to zero for all of them, right? Zero. Zero, 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 zero. Correct or not? So therefore, you cannot measure final rate because they are all going to be the same. So the only part with maximum difference is initial rate. So that's why you want to measure initial rate. Okay? Clear? So if this Wait, kind of question so... in exam, it can be in your paper three yeah, because this is related to the experiment. It can be in paper three, it can be paper two, it can be in paper one, you know the answer. Yes? Oh yeah, sorry, Cha. Um, I don't really get like the first part of your explanation before you uh, erased it. Okay, can I get back the one or not? Yes, okay, which part? Uh, the last part, which is R is most accurate for as indicated in the materials and method of the experiment. I don't get that. So say for example, I said, okay, the concentration I'm going to use is, let's say, uh, five millimolar, millimolar, okay? So for my concentration of five millimolar, and I use, let's say, five ml, uh, what should be the rate? I'm going to measure it, right? Uh -huh. So when I measure the rate, is the concentration of substrate at that time when I measure the rate is exactly at five millimolar or less? Exactly at five millimolar. It must be as close to five millimolar as possible, isn't it? Yeah. So I start experiment with this concentration, but as time passes by, my substrate is going to convert to product. So my this five will become less than five already, you know. Okay. So, which means to say, when is it during experiment, my concentration is closest to 5 millimolar? At when? Initial. When? Initial, right? So, that's why I need to measure initial rate because initial rate is when the substrate concentration is closest to this concentration that I have reported in my um, um, practical report, the experiment report. Understand? Okay. Yeah. So the rate no, I that I see, it must tally with this one because I will, if I am the, I am reading your report, I will tell you that, okay, if I'm going to use 5 millimolar, I will expect to get this rate, you know. So when is it the concentration of your substrate closest to the 5 millimolar? Uh, it must be the initial, isn't it? So therefore you must measure the initial. Then only your rate, tally with this concentration that you have written. Oh, okay. Correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because if you measure later on, it could be 4, 3, 2, 1, you know, let's say with time from 5 becomes 4, and then you measure this time is 4. You measure this time is the concentration of uh, substrate is 3 and then 2. So you measure different time, different concentration. Then the rate for this one doesn't tally with this concentration, it tally with this concentration already, you know. But you're reporting this 5 millimolar. So I cannot be taking this rate and say, oh, 5 millimolar will give me this rate. Sorry, it's not. This is 2 millimolar already at this time. Oh, 
right? I must wow. measure right at the start as close to zero, T equals to zero as possible. I must measure because this is when the concentration is exactly five millimolar as reported. All right. Yeah, so this is, this is what you need to do in experiment. You must try to do experiment in a way that your result is, we already said, uh, accurate and reliable, right? Accurate means close to the true value. True value what? Whatever you write here, your rate must tally with this, this concentration. It's called true value. Why is there an error? Because we measure later. There's an error. Okay? Okay. Yes. Crystal said lagging. I don't know. Okay. Now, this is only for enzyme. Huh? In this question, they also talk about inhibitor, right? So that means in my reaction mixture, I have got the... Uh, substrate as well as inhibitor. So I have to talk about substrate inhibitor ratio. Okay, so this is a competitive inhibitor. So at the beginning, I have got the highest substrate concentration. So I'm talking about substrate concentration versus inhibitor concentration. Substrate to inhibitor concentration is the highest at the beginning of the experiment. Why? Because as time passes by, the enzyme will convert substrate to product. So your substrate concentration will drop, but your inhibitor concentration remain the same. Can you see that? When you've got substrate and inhibitor, as time passes by, substrate converted to product. Substrate concentration can drop. Inhibitor remain the same. So when is it that the substrate concentration is the highest? It is at the beginning, right? So at the beginning, means meaning to say that the rate is the highest at the beginning. So initial rate is the highest. So you want to measure the initial rate because the enzyme, most enzyme is active at the beginning of the, of the experiment. Do you understand this part? I have got enzyme, okay? I've got my substrate. So I've got a lot of substrate. Let's say I've got a lot of substrate, okay? At the beginning, let's say I've got five substrate at the beginning. Then I've got one inhibitor. Okay, let's say this is inhibitor. So the chances of inhibitor sitting in here, right? At the beginning, is actually one out of six, isn't it? There are six molecules here, one to sit. So chances of this sitting is one out of six when you've got a lot of substrate. Now this substrate sit in converted to product. So this sit in already converted to product. Okay, so now you've got less one substrate. So the chances of this sitting in now becomes one out of five. It's higher already, you know. Then when this one sit in converted to product, now you are left with three substrate. So the chances of inhibitor sit in becomes one out of four. Then after that, one out of three. Right, then after that, one out of two. Then finally, you only left with the inhibitor and no substrate. So definitely inhibitor will sit in and inhibit the enzyme, right? So this is the probability of inhibitor sitting into the enzyme active site as the time passes by. Because more and more substrate is converted to product. So there are less substrate to inhibitor ratio Therefore, the increased chances of inhibitor sitting into enzyme active site. So therefore, it will increase. It will increase the enzyme inhibited. Increase the concentration of enzyme that's being inhibited. So which means to say less active enzyme. There will be less active enzyme. So this is when you include inhibitor into the picture. This is how you need to explain your answer. You need to talk about substrate to inhibitor ratio. It's the highest at the beginning. So there will be higher chance for substrate to sit in. There will be more active enzyme at that time. So the rate is the highest. Can or not? Hello? 
are you doing okay? 